Today I'm bringing you guys Bro Kappa vs Pegout for Smoke on Snack Draft. If I'm not mistaken, this is the first Sun and Moon OU match of the tour. Uh, looking at the teams, I think it's gonna be a Spadef trend with Toxic. Mega Alakazam seems like a huge threat to his team and that can at least take a hit after Alakazam is mega and put it on a time with Toxic. One of these two has to be Scarf, I'm thinking the Lando is probably Scarf. And then the Greninja could be some sort of breaking Greninja, either Z-Move or Specs. Then, if Heatran is rocks, Clef could be CM. Or if CM is rocks, Heatran um, would get an extra move slot. We'll have to see that later. Mobile is a good breaker in general, and Amoongus helps him check stuff like Greninja. In this match, it helps him versus Superior and Kartana. On Pegard's side, I'm not actually sure if the lander would be Scarf. Land is his only potential rocker, so I assume it's not gonna be Scarf, but I'm actually not sure. Then his defogger, like he had three potential defoggers outside of Landris, which are Katana, Superior, and Latios. I'm thinking it's gonna be Mega Latios. Uh, Spadef Gastrodon to deal with um, Magiana and Greninja. Superior. Superior could be Leftovers, or it could, it could also be Z move Superior. Like, he has he had a few potential Z move users, it's like, not that easy for me to pick. But yeah, turn 1, Magnezone versus Heatran lead. Uh, if Pegat is Scarf, he could just Volt Switch out. If he's not Choice Scarf, he probably just wants to Hard Switch into either the Lari or the Gastron. Uh, probably just into Lari. And um, Bro Kappa could probably just throw off a Toxic turn 1. Oh, he goes for Rocks, okay. So now Pegard, um went into Lari, and I think he's just gonna Mega Evolve, get extra Bulk, extra Special Attack. Um, if Bro Kappa has Protect, he can click that to scout what Pegard wants to do. If he doesn't have that, he can just go into his Clef or Greninja. As he does Mega Evolve and there is the Protect and we see it's Surf Lottie instead of Earthquake, that's interesting. If anyone knows um, why you run Surf over Earthquake, if that's for anything specific, let me know. And I assume he just went into Go for a Toxic because that is definitely Spadeftran and that was pretty obvious from Team Preview. Now he can just Protect again, he doesn't even mind if Pegat switches out, he gets extra lefties. If his opponent switches, he can potentially Protect again and get more leftovers back. And now he can just switch out into either Greninja or Clefable. Um, they both can eat up a Surf with ease, Greninja also doesn't care about um, Psychic. And um, Draco is like not that common on Mega Lari these days, even though I think it should be used a little bit more because people sometimes just throw their Greninjas in on Mega Lari. Uh, but yeah, Bro Kappa doesn't want to stay in here, even though he can live another Surf. Um, since the Heatran revealed rocks, I assume the Clefable is going to be a Calmine variant. And yeah, I, th I feel like he's just going to throw the Greninja in right here. And Pegard, I guess Pegard can potentially pull a double here. Does he have a play that covers Greninja and Clef? Potential double would be Superior. And then if Superior has Glare, he could Glare either the Heatran or the Amoongus on the Switch. Um, another potential double here is... Katana doesn't really get him that much, I don't think. Because Bro Kappa has good checks for that. As he does just reveal Defog, okay, and gets rid of the rocks for now. But Toxic keeps him chipped quite a bit, so he has to roost soon. But obviously he doesn't want to stay in here. I assume he's just going to go on the Gastron to check um, what type of Greninja Bro Kappa is. Um, Bro Kappa can, if he doesn't have anything to hit the Gastron, he can just throw off a Spike here. Or if he also doesn't have a Spike, with, but I assume he has a Spike. Another potential play for Bro Kappa here is doubling out. But he doesn't really have a great double that pressures the Gastron much. Like his best one that wants to come in versus Gastron other than Amoongus is the is the Clef. And like doubling those in doesn't make that much sense. So I think he's just gonna go for spikes right here. Pegat obviously doesn't want to stay in here. If this is Battle Bond Guninja, he would just give him Ash form. He also still needs the Lari around because uh, that's his Heatran check. Even though he has a secondary Heatran check. Oh, he goes in the Magnezone, so this makes me think he might be a Salt Vest Magnezone, because otherwise you would not bring this in hard on a Greninja. Now... Bro Kappa can just go Heatran here, or it goes Among Us even. Oh, damn, Heatran would have worked on the Flash Can, but yeah, he predicted the potential Volt Switch. Among Us covered everything, basically, so it was also a fine play. And now Paycard um, does Volt Switch, reveals that he's not choice locked, and yeah, I think he's AV, because he brought this in on a Greninja. And yeah, Ladi um, being status is good in this sense that he cannot be spot or stun spot by the Amoongus. 
Uh, Brokepa doesn't want to stay in and take a potential Psychic, so he does just go hard into Greninja. Pegat was either going to defog or recover there, so Greninja was completely free. And now either Gastron or Magnezone is going to come out. I think Gastron is going to come out this time, because there's a spike on Pegat's side. Um, yeah, yeah, that's just going to Gastron. And Brokepa goes for Dark Pulse, and now that's probably choice back's damage. He gets a crit, which sucks for Pegat. If he gets flinched, he loses his Gastrodon, and he would have gotten... Ash form, Brokepa would have gotten Ash form. So Pekka has to recover here a few times and hope that he doesn't get flinched. Brokepa doesn't have to go for Dark Pulse here, he can also just hard switch out and take advantage, knowing that Pekka has to go for um, the recover there. Now, um, there is a Ladi in the back that is already status and he already went for. Exactly, exactly. And he already went for Thing Stun Spur earlier into the Ladi. So I feel like he was either going to sludge bomb or clear smoke there or he was going to have to pull a double and he did pull a double and uh, Pegat is playing this well. Like he earthquaked, predicting Bro Kappa to double as he catched, caught the Greninja and got 52 in the Greninja and now he knows that he's going to go back. Uh, he goes back into Among Us. Another potential play for um, Bro Kappa there was also going, I think it was Gastron on the field so another potential play also would have been Clef there. Which would have covered the Ladi. But yeah, he predicted the Mungus and doubled back into Ladi, and I think he's just gonna defog here. Uh, but technically, Brokepa can go into his grand predicting the defog, but he's just hard psychics in case the Mungus wants to stay in. And now this is bad for Pegard. I feel like he maybe defog would have been the better play there. Uh, but also, his team doesn't have a dark resist, so this Greninja, this Greninja is like really annoying for him. Gets up another spike, which is completely fine for Brokepa. Now, Clefable or Mungus is gonna come out. Like, I feel like eventually you should go into Clef instead of Among Us. Because um, if you always go Among Us, he can, you, are, you become too obvious and the opponent can predict that. So Pegat doubled into his Landris and goes for Earthquake. That doesn't do too much and the Clef reveals Ice Beam and just kills it. So we will never know if the Landris was actually Choice Scarf. Uh, that definitely looks like Fizz Death Clef. The Lando might have some sort of attack investment. I'm not sure if that's max attack. I can actually run a Kalk right here on the side. Ka Katana comes out and forces Bro Kappa to go hard into Among Us. And then we will know if it's a SD or if it's... Oh, he goes into Landris. No, we will see if it's Bandit or if it's um, SD card. I'm definitely sh thinking that it's Bandit card. I did quite a lot. So now Bro Kappa can just U-turn. I'm thinking he's Choice Scarf. And if Pegard stays in, uh, Bro Kappa can just go into his Heatran. And if Pekka switches out, Bro Kappa gets momentum here just by clicking U-turn. But I'm gonna calc real quick. Choice Scarf Landers was his Clefable. Earthquake does 39 to 46 for Max Attack Landers. Well, it doesn't have to be Scarf, but I'm just trying to figure out if it was Max Attack Landers. Well, yeah, it could have also been Zemo von Landers actually, Max Attack, and then Scarf can be something else. Um, I'm thinking the Scarf might be on the Superior if the Landers wasn't Scarf, because this Katana is Bandit, I think. Smart Strike still does 11 at minus 1 to Heatran, so I think that's Bandit. Misses a Magma Storm there, which is a bit annoying, but it's not too, too bad. He could, um, I think he just goes for Recover there, yeah. That was a good play on Brokepa going hard into Greninja, because uh, Pekka ran for Recover, predicting him to protect, and Brokepa knew that he would either defog or Recover there, so Greninja was free. And the Dark Pulse damage uh, from Choice Specs, um, Greninja confirms that this Magnezon is Assault Vest. And now... Um, I was gonna say you can go into either Heatran or Among Us. Among Us was safer because you still want to keep some health on Heatran, yeah. Now the Ladi comes out and I think we're gonna see a defog here because there's two layers on the field. Greninja comes back and then Greninja can just lay up the spikes again. Uh, I don't think Pegat is gonna risk giving him the Ash form. So I think he's gonna just switch out back into his Gastron here. Because his Magnuson already got weakened too much to the point where it can't switch into hard into Superior, okay. So maybe he is Choice Scarf, Bro Kappa obviously has to switch out here to scout for that uh, into his either Heatran or Among Us, goes into Among Us, there's a Leaf Storm doing absolutely nothing. Also the Among Us doesn't have Black Sludge, so there's a... Is, I don't think that's AV because it did 8%. And he didn't reveal any Zemo users yet, so maybe the Among Us is the Zemo user, which uh, sounds weird to me, I'm not sure which Zemo it would be. But the Grinja is definitely Specs, the Lanro's Scarf and the Cliff was lefties and the trend was lefties and the mobile is mega so either doesn't have a z-move user or the among us is z-move where well, larios comes out on a clear smog and larios can just heal up here so bro kappa gets another opportunity to bring out his um, guninja or clef here 
Also, Comment Clef actually looks pretty threading in this match. I'm pretty sure it's Comment, even though he didn't reveal it yet. Like I said, because rocks are on the trend. So he goes hard into Greninja, predicting the recover. And now he can either Dark Pulse or Spike. Probably Spike, knowing that the Gastron has to come out because the Superior is already weakened, the Magnezone is already weakened. So Gastrodon, um, so forces Kappa and to switch into either Clef or Amoongus. Doubles into Katana, which covers the Clef, but did not cover the Amoongus. So now Bro Kappa can just switch into Amoongus. This was completely fine for him. Because um, he got three leftovers on his Clef and he can just go into Amoongus to see what the Katana wants to lock itself into. Goes for knockoff, does 40% and there's no item. No item got knocked off, so I'm pretty sure it's Zemo for Amoongus, so I... Called that correct. Well, I didn't call it. I just saw he didn't have another Z-move user on his team, so I figured that he's uh, probably Z-move. So now Pekar has to switch out here. Um, well, he can stay in, I guess, predicting Brokapper to make it pull a double out. Um, but Brokapper has like safe plays. Like he can potentially go into Morwile, or he just stays in. What does he go for? Giga Drain. Like Morwile could have potentially been a play right there, because I would have caught the Ladi. And it would have also covered the katana going for a knockoff again. And yeah, Clef now also covers the knockoff again. And also kind of covers the Lari. And now Bro Kappa can just softball up knowing that the katana is most likely knocked, locked in. Um, but yeah, I wanted to run the Kalk, but it's quite obvious that the katana is banded. As softball was always the player just to be healthy. Now Amoongus slash Heatron coming out goes Heatron, Volt Switch into a uh, Ladi slash Gastron here because Katana doesn't get you anything if you go Katana you take spikes and he protects and scouts what you lock into and all you did is took a spike and then he knows what you locked in and then you either have to switch or he can stay in if you go for the wrong move so it goes for Surf, the Protect was always the play just to get some extra health and chip the Ladi with Toxic and now he obviously switches out hard into Grand knowing that it can live with Surf also covered the Ladi going for Defog and now he can just click Dark Pulse because uh, the Gastron will be forced to click Recover if you click Dark Pulse, it doesn't matter too much uh, if it can eat that up. And he knows his Recover is going to come out, goes to Clef, and now Clef can either attack here or can go for Calm Mind. Pekka doesn't really have good counterplay to this. Um, he could, I was just going to say he could go hard into either the zone or... Yeah, he didn't want to go hard into Card because Card would have gotten bopped by a potential um, coverage move like Flamethrower, even though he just revealed Ice Beam. Uh, he doesn't have flamethrower, he's probably Ice Beam, Moonblast, Softballed, Calm Mind. So he gets him there, goes in the Heatron on the obvious Flash Can and just kills the Magna Zone with a Magma Storm and now either Heatron, uh, either Latios or Gastron is gonna have to come out. And since the Magna Zone just went down and the Katana is already chipped and Pro Kappa also has decent counterplay for Katana, it's looking like uh, Calm and Clef can win in the late game relatively easy. Because it sets up on the Gastrodon. If it sets up, it also easily walls Megalari and it also walls Superior if it's set up. And Superior is also already in range from Ice Beam, it's already chipped. So it is looking heavily in Bro Kappa's favor. If Lari comes out here, he can just default, get more leftovers, and Lari will get chipped from Toxic. If Katana comes out, he can protect to see what it locks itself into. If Gastrodon comes out, he can also go for protect to get some um, leftovers, and then the next turn he can switch. I think his Clef is out of range where it dies from Earthquake, so Clef can probably still switch into Gastron. If it's not in, not healthy enough, then he can still bring Amoongus in on Gastron. So it seems like he's in complete control of this game. But yeah, I'm just gonna collect to make sure. Yeah, Knockoff would have done 15 to 17 if the Katana was Scarf, and I did 27 to the Clef. Just had to make sure that I didn't say anything wrong and that it's um, that it's Bandit Katana. Even though it was quite obvious from the damage it did. So Gastron comes out, protects pretty free here. Uh, there's no reason not to do go for it. And now, like I said, if Clef is healthy enough to take Earthquake, you can go Clef. Otherwise, you go into Amoongus. Okay, oh, yeah, Clef is at 94. He softballed earlier, so Clef was super free. I just forgot that he went for softball. My bad. And now, um, I think you just hard Ice Beam here. Calm Minds first. That's also a completely fine play. Uh, because, yeah... He still has checks for Katana. Now he Ice Beams because he doesn't want to have Pekat go hard into Katana on the softball. I think he should Ice Beam again here because it's just in case Pekat goes into the Katana. If he does go into Katana and he breaks it and goes for Ice Beam. Exactly. Because Earthquake would not have killed him. And then even if the gas turn went for Earthquake again, he could have still softballed it the next turn. And now um, plus one Psychic might probably still kill. So as a roll from here, yeah, it does kill. So at least it's not a 6, so he's able to kill that. Um, if you went hard grand there, there would have been some flex. 
Tatius. He didn't have to do that at all. But I was thinking that Clef could have won the game if he um, kept it healthy. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So now we see Dark Pulse? Yeah. He doesn't want to risk anything there. Uh, Gastron is forced to recover. I think Gastron already used a free, few recover PP, like 2 or 3. So Mungus comes out. Hard Earthquakes doesn't recover. But, like, what do you switch into Dark Pulse now? Because you didn't recover this. Uh, so he doubles into Landris there. As he Earthquakes. He predicted him to make pull some sort of double or to not go for Giga and now he's forced to spam recover for a bit and he's not healing much because Landra's Earthquake is actually doing a decent chunk since this gas turn is Spidef and not Fizzdev. So he's just gonna have to speed spam coming. <laughs> Why can I not talk? He's gonna have to spam recover for a few turns, try to get a bit more healthy, but if Brokapa gets high rolls, like turn 55, he got a 55% roll. Then, then this Gaster is not even healing much, now 56. So eventually Pegat is gonna have to switch because he was gonna run low on recovers. He also risks getting crit. So eventually he will have to go hard into his Ladi on the Earthquake. Um, as he does just do that right now. And Bro Kappa is forced out here and Pegat is probably... Oh, he stays in. Well, he stayed in, but... Okay, I guess he just sacks that and he tried to catch a double. Oh, he also didn't need his Landris at all. And now Greninja can just click Dark Pulse. And Gastron um, risks getting flinched, and also I don't know how many recovers he has left. I'm gonna guess he has like eight or nine left. He has only six left. Oh wow! So Mungus comes out. Uh, does he Giga Drain here or does he double? He just Giga Drains. Larios might barely live that poison. Yeah, ten. Oh yeah, only the six percent. So now uh, he's gonna have to heal. And Greninja gets another free as Dark Pulse, and eventually he will get Ash Form because the Gastron cannot keep coming in on the Greninja because it only has like five recovers left or six. And Gastron has to go for recover again here. Uh, he might go for the Flinch or he might just switch out back into Amoongus. Yeah, he goes for the Flinch there and does not get it, but I think only four recovers left now. So it Okay, he just wants to... Th does he want to just say... Oh, yeah, yeah. Because if he Dark Pulses, that means the Gastron is low. Um, which means it's probably in range where Morwell can kill it. I think he's in range where Morwell can kill it. Um, ob obviously, obviously. I mean, Player of destroys it. But I think he's also in range where he dies to a knockoff, which means Brokepa does not have to risk missing Player of. That's what I meant to say. Obviously, Player of would do even more to a Gastrodon. Player of would do, like, maybe 80 or 90%. Uh, let me run the Kalk real quick. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Like, I'm thinking he has knockoff or some other 100% accurate move that can kill from here. Uh, Player of actually does 88 to 104. Knockoff does 63 minimum to Spadev Gastro. So I think he's just. He has knockoff because otherwise. Yeah, otherwise he has to risk missing Player of, obviously. I don't know if that's another 100% accurate move that Smaller gets that kills Gastron. Uh, obviously, Pega doesn't have a switch in. And since he got rid of the Greninja, that was the main thing he needed to get run 4. I think he's gonna just stay in here. And we will see if Brokappa has player off or if... I mean, he obviously has player off, but we will see if he also has knockoff. That way he does not have to risk missing. Let's see. Does have knockoff, just bobs the uh, Gastron. And now... Yeah, I don't see Baygard winning at all. He has to, like, hack through with the Superior now. Um... And even if he hacks it through with Glare, as he does go for Glare, I still don't think he can win. So Priya, um, if it doesn't have Leech Sheet or HP Ground, can't do anything to Heatran, as he just, just go hard into the Ladi there. Now the Ladi has to recover here, because otherwise it goes down to Poison, slash Toxic, however you want to call it. Uh, it's is it a t Oh yeah, it's a Toxic. It's a Toxic from Heatran. For a second there, I thought it was a Sludge Bomb Poison from Gast from from Amoongus, but it's a Toxic from Heatran. So he misses one there. That doesn't really matter too much. The Toxic is just gonna rack up. The Magma Storm's secondary effect is also great for Bro Kappa. And yeah, he got him there. He recovered on the Protect, but that still does not matter at all. The Heatran is way too healthy. It can live a Surf with ease, as you guys can see that does half. Gets Para there, which doesn't matter too, too much. Uh, if Bro Kappa really wants to, he can switch out, but staying in is also completely fine. He lives another hit, and the Toxic racks up, and hitting that Magma Storm means Ladi guaranteed dies. Yeah, he was um, willing to give up the Heatran because he does have uh, um, Amoongus in the back. He also potentially has Sucker Punch in the back. And I do think this might have been Choice Scarf Superior. And the Landers might have been the Zemo user. Yeah, Lando could have probably been the Zemo with rocks, but I'm not 100% sure about that. 
Hey, thank you guys for watching. Bro Cap, Bro Cap gets the victory. And um, there will be more Snake Games tomorrow. I think I think Finch is playing tomorrow. And yeah, stay tuned for more tournament coverage. Smoke on Snake Drives and Ulti. And um, also some lower T coverage. My man Seal is gonna bring you guys some LC later or tomorrow. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Peace out, friends. Hope you enjoyed. Have a fantastic day. And goodbye.